question. It changes a lot from how we travel usually. What do you think about it? Hey, this is Next Meridian. We are Nick and Mathilde and we left everything behind to travel the world with our Land Rover Defender, Albatros. Three years, seven continents, 88 countries and just the road as a home. This week, we stop overlanding. Our usual travel style looks very much like this. But in the last episode, we made it to Mexico City just in time for Christmas to meet with Nicholas' family. And to travel with them, we adapted. In this episode, we are going to try another way of traveling. It gives us the opportunity to compare our usual overlanding travel style with a more traditional type of tourism. But before that, we need to celebrate Christmas! We made it to Mexico City and we dropped all our stuff at the place where we're sleeping. Nicola parked the car in a safe uh, parking place. And then we were like, oh yeah, let's go to eat some tacos tonight. Like those tourists completely forgot there's a 24th. December and everything is closed. When we meet someone and we're like, oh, we're looking for some tacos to eat. No, no, there's nothing like that. You will not find anything. And indeed, we don't find anything. Nope. We found the last places open in the neighborhood. They do fried chicken and fried cauliflower. Better than nothing. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> this is what it's like to celebrate Christmas on the road. Hotel room, plant that is stolen in the patio of the hotel for the Christmas tree. Christmas gift on the bed, on the bed. and everyone, champagne. champagne. Are you ready? Yeah. Happiness. Happiness. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Watch the ceiling as well. Watch the song. Yeah. Woo! It's also a bit difficult to do gift on the road, so sometimes the packaging is not ideal. We're on a sock. <laughs> so like sock. Phil giving me a gift in his sock, which is clean. <laughs> and intelligent flight battery for the new drone. Yeah. Yes, man. Oh. Where did we get? I don't know yet, but I think we got a shower tent from Vicky Wood. It's actually written shower tent. We got us some license plate from from France because uh, apparently in Mexico and Central America, sometimes they steal foreigners' plates for whatever reason, and you need the plate to be able to drive on the road, whatever it is. So at least we have one spare. Thank you, Phil. In the following days, we started our visit of Mexico City. Which brings me to our first positive point about traveling in this manner versus our usual overland journey. We get so much more insight on history, the country's history. Uh, or Mexico Tenochtitlan, as it was founded by the Aztecs, it was an island in the middle of the lake. So to connect the island to mainland, they must build roads or avenues, right? So a long time ago, you took a look at the left and you could see only water. You could take a look at the right and you could see water. But this, 700 years ago. No more, guys. Nowadays, we have something very different, but the road is still the same. And that's why we consider it the oldest uh, avenue in the American continent. Today, we'll change a bit from our usual program. Uh, so we saw the family of Nick yesterday and they arrived at the hotel and now we're going on a... yeah, it's more touristic than what we do usually but we're going on a tour in the city of Mexico and the surroundings to see the Aztec ruins and everything about the history of Mexico the history is actually fascinating like the city is built between volcanoes and it was built like on top of a lake on an island and then it was one of the biggest city of the world at that time connected with bridge to mainland and then they built and built and built artificial islands it was nearing mastering so question it changes a lot from how we travel usually what do you think about it we are 
with the family so of course the dynamics change a lot and we are extremely flexible and extremely happy they're here and we will do whatever they want to do and so the difference is we are in a van with like 15 people and we are just being dropped off at different positions of uh, Mexico City and being told the story which is great because actually we get a full story that you don't always get on Wikipedia or elsewhere but it's the first time in eight months that we're crowded with people and that we're following like sheeps trying to go left and right. Like, what should we do? What should we visit? This is the moment you take a picture. This is the moment you listen. But it's a lot of fun and honestly, it's different. At least we do something different and when we'll go back to our car in three weeks, I mean car, we will be in our car, but back to our normal uh, travel habits in three weeks, we will be like, ah, oh, this is a lot of fun. So it will bring back all the joys of being alone and you know, traveling alone. And we learn a lot. That's what Nico was saying. Like Mexico City history and culture is huge and with this kind of tour like we get the full run. Yep. So yes, big cities are fascinating and we can learn so much about the history. But that goes hand in hand with many more tourists who, just like us, want to see and understand the place better. Which is something we have been trying to avoid quite a bit since we started this trip. <laughs> There's a lot of people, it's very touristic, but it's really cool, really, really nice. Uh, Phil, you're the architect, can you tell me what you learned about that you work on? What I learned about it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's like put on some, like foundations are basically like on a, on a lake, it used to be a lake, so it's sinking like three meters since it started and then what else is there um yeah they do like layers you have like the onion core so it's like it's an onion you call them onions like you have the central pyramid and then they would just like every civilization of come and like layer it with his own layer i guess and then it just grew so that's about it and then yeah sacrifices killing people okay we can't add that <laughs> <laughs> and uh, right now, right behind me is the second biggest uh, temple and over there, 65 meter high, is the biggest one which is where we're going right now. And we've got the whole family, we got Phil, and back there Mathilde with Patricia, our friend, and, Mat and Alessandra, my mother. And we're all here together and it's actually pretty cold because Mexico City is at a 2200 or 2300 altitude level. This is the 65 meter temple. Um, it is pretty big. How does it look? Looking magical. All this history opened our appetite, so we also spent a lot of time eating in Mexico City. And that would be a plus for this type of travel, because you don't get to cook for yourself, so you have to go out and you get to try so much food. And we loved food in Mexico City. Gotta, I might have to steal the. Mm. So oh. fruits and then tacos. Yep. That's street the way. Right, that's the right order. Okay. <laughs> Quesadilla, sí, más un taco así. Dos quesadillas, un taco. Zul, what? How do you like it? It's good, but it's um, not as good as the one from Baja. Okay. But they're good. Straight up facts. It was good. After three days of history and food fueling, we took the road again with Nick and we drove to Oaxaca, where the family of Nick was to meet us flying by plane. We're on our way right now to Cholula, which is uh, an hour and a half away from Mexico City. And on the way to Cholula, there is a volcano, which is very, very tall. And actually right now we're on the highway going towards Cholula. And uh, we can see it, it's really impressive. It's huge, there's even snow up there, it looks like. And uh, from Cholula then we will go to Oaxaca, which is another, I think, four hours road on the highway and um, yeah we're just taking the highway because we have to get to Oaxaca at a certain time um, so that we can spend more time there with family 
When on a trip with hotel and more visits planned, there is the disadvantage of being more on a schedule. And this is something we don't have too much when overlanding normally. We are very flexible to spend a day more here, discover nature place there, more time to explore and discover random places. And that would be one of the things we missed. So I don't know if you remember, if you followed our videos back in Arizona, we were fascinated by the Sawaros cactus, which are like giant cactuses, literally, and the Joshua trees. And here we found both of them along with the side of the random highway in Mexico. Earlier today we passed by entire fields of, uh, of Joshua trees, but here it's even more impressive. There's mountains hills covered with forest of sauros, those giant cactuses. So you don't always need to go to a national park to find natural wonders. interesting here it's like a two-lane road I mean a one lane each way and uh, because there's so many slow trucks and it's going up and down hills um, the common practice here is that you use the security lanes on the side of the road uh, as a lane so I would be driving one tire on one lane on the security lane and one tire on the normal lane and people would use the middle lines to pass each other and move over. And everybody's doing it, so I guess it's a common practice here. I mean, it's pretty scary, but it's part of the fun, I guess. There's two really slow trucks, one in front of you, one upcoming, and somebody's already taking the middle lane. And all the other cars going full speed, well, they have to brake pretty hard. As soon as we arrived in Oaxaca, we have no other choice than stopping to try the local street tacos. So I think I will add that to the plus list one more time because it's a big plus to eat outside all the time. Late night arrival in Oaxaca. So we grabbed Philip, who arrived by the airport and we went to a taco place and we didn't notice, but the taco place is one of the like taco place showed up in the next week next week's show about street food so randomly we ended up here and we're going to try that Good morning, this is our hostel room. Uh, I'm here with Mathilde and Phil is over here. We're all sharing one hostel room and uh, my mom and her friend are in the other room. Uh, yeah, it's pretty small, but hostels are cool. Pretty dark in here, but anyways, let's get out and go visit. On this type of journey, even though we have more of objective comfort, like bathrooms that comes with the hotel, the downside of traveling in city and sleeping in hotels adds up pretty fast financially, which makes the travel mode more expensive than our usual overland journey. It's not a problem in most cases, but for our world tour project, it would not be sustainable. Go! Hey everyone, I'm Phil, Nick's brother. Hi everyone, I'm Patricia, Nick's Hi everyone, <laughs> I'm Nixon, Phil's mother. Ciao! Ciao! We had not done a proper introduction, this is done! Let's continue our review. Arriving in Oaxaca made us realize that spending more time in the city was a great way to get more of the culture of a place. Oaxaca de Juarez is the capital of the Oaxaca state and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Yeah, no 
soy Naira para ti. talking culture, there is something originally from Oaxaca we needed to discover. We're now going for something super local. We're going to do a mezcal tasting. Mezcal is this uh, alcoholic drink made with uh, blue agave. So we're going to try it. Let's see. Seven uh, species of agave that can be used to produce mezcal, right? But us, we only use these eight species, right? And this one, Espadil, is the more common, right? I think 80% of all the mezcal you're going to find here in Oaxaca, in Mexico, or even in another country, is going to be an Espadil, right? The other 20% are the Guayabanas, right? Also, Oaxaca is a state that have more endemic agaves, right? They only grow here in Oaxaca. You told us. This one's the easiest to drink. It's getting easier and easier. It's like passion fruit. We're going to start with apple, pineapple, banana, cinnamon, and caramel. Yeah, I have the cinnamon and I have the piña. This one is a intense one. Yeah, that's what it's intense. And in the garden of the Mescaleria, there's all the different types of agave we've been trying so far. So this is espadín, which is the most common one. Tepex, tepexitate is one of the drinks we preferred and it's also very pretty. Oaxaca today it was a super nice day the town is beautiful really beautiful there's a lot of tourists but somehow it didn't somehow it didn't alter like towns the city like it's super nice and a super place to try mezcal relax a bit walk in nice and beautiful streets so now direction the pacific ocean for new year's is sure it's very touristic but it's a lot of local tourism a lot of Mexican are coming for the holidays and they love celebrating uh, yesterday in the streets of Oaxaca city there was like celebrations everywhere today for the new year look around it it's beautiful no and they're selling decorations and fireworks awesome super mood so it is December 31st, 2022 and we are heading to the Pacific coast with Nick's family to celebrate New Year at the beach. Nick's family rented the smallest car ever, a little Chevrolet, to be more flexible in the following days. A beautiful journey in front of us, through the mountains, down to the ocean. Our little group is back on the road, Albo the Defender in front and the little Chevrolet behind.
on the way while admiring the road, we suddenly were reminded the oval and travel feeling. And passing through small villages and modest homes along the road, we remember that maybe what we miss the most by changing the way we travel is just to discover the normal life of people in another country. Going to markets and shops to get our stuff, meeting people on the side of the road, asking around for a place to stay at night. So we'll add that to our list. Meeting normal people, doing normal stuff. And soon enough, we made it to the Pacific coast on New Year Eve. Our friend Patricia packed fondue in her bag flying to Mexico. So it's with 25 degrees evening that we shared a fondue and champagne to celebrate the new year coming 2023. Hopefully, this new year will bring more adventures, more travel and more discoveries. We are very lucky we get to spend the end of the year celebration with close ones and thank them immensely for crossing an ocean to meet us. Okay, I think it is time for us to review our comparison chart. Here is the final result. To it, we would like to add two things. In the positive, that being with family and friends and adapting for being together is always the best idea. And in the negative, that we missed our home albatross a lot and can't wait to be back in it. Would you add anything to the chart? We enjoyed the beginning of the year, resting and enjoying with our family in front of the warm Pacific coast of Oaxaca. But we also planned. Strong from those conclusions, with Nick's family, we adapted our plans for the following week. And Albatross and the little rented Chevrolet were getting ready for more discoveries on the road of South Mexico, specifically the state of Chiapas. To be sure you do not miss the rest of the world tour, subscribe to the channel. See you next week. Ta-da! <laughs>